Graham Murphy Tech Rentals here again, uh, just continuing our look at the Hiyoki LR8431-20. Okay, now we're going to um, wire up a 4 to 20 milliamp transducer to the input 3. Okay, now in the case of 4 to 20 milliamp, this unit, to measure current, this unit doesn't have a 100 ohm resistor. So if you're using, um, a, you know, just a straight transducer and um, haven't got it in a current system, etc., you would need a 100 ohm resistor or something, a, a, a resistor uh, across the input uh, to drop the voltage. So because this unit only measures voltage. Now, the other, the other usual case is the fact that here's a typical, um, we've got 24 volts. This is typical uh, 4 to 20 milliamp situation down here. We go through a measurement system then down to ground. Now, this would be our normal situation when our control system is connected up here. Now, if you're wiring this up to an existing system, you've got two choices. If you can figure out what the value of this is in the control system that you're using, now you can work that out by either using documentation or just using a little bit of maths, i.e. use a multimeter, measure the voltage drop across here and take the reading and then use, you've measured the voltage drop, so V is equal to Ri, so the resistance will be equal to V over I, so you will you know what the current, uh, with the scaling etc, you, you know what the reading is, and you'll know what the, the current is etc, and you can sort of work it out. The other choice would be to break the loop down here, say for example, and add in the measurement system in a wiring that looks something akin to this. So you have the 24 volts uh, down to the transducer, down to the measurement system, then down to, through a 100 ohm resistor down to ground. So here's your measurement system and here's a, where we're actually monitoring using this recorder. Now we could put this recorder up here, break the loop there, or break the loop there anywhere along the lines. So um, in this instance, what we've got is a 4 to 20 milliamp, and I've got a 100 ohm resistor. Now I'm just gonna, I accidentally hit a few buttons there. So I've got a 100 ohm resistor, but so what I'm gonna do is, I'll start, I'll get the channel running. So again, I've got a choice between picking here or here. So I'm gonna pick here to do it. Now, if I go channel uh, up to, there's channel three, and I'm going to enable it. Now, because I've put a 100 ohm resistor there, at four milliamp, I've got a 100 ohm resistor approximately, and we can double check that, etc. V is equal to Ri, so therefore, the uh, 100 ohm resistor at 20 milliamp is uh, divided by 1000 is equal to 2 volts and 4 milliamp 100 by 4 divided by 1000 because it's milliamp uh, is 0.4 volts so therefore the voltage range I'm looking at using a 100 ohm resistor is from 0.4 volts at 4 milliamp uh, to 2 volts at 20 milliamp or if I use a 250 ohm, it'd be one to five volts. But anyway, 100 ohms is the more normal resistance size. So therefore the range of operation here is 0.4 volts to two volts. So I've enabled this thing. So what I'm gonna do though, is I happen to have a calibrator connected up to this. So I'm gonna set the calibrator up so it's a milliamp source. And I will bring it up and I'm gonna produce four milliamps on the calibrator and I'm gonna come down here, I need to set the range up. You'll notice say it says over range, so we need to set that up at a, say for example, a 10 volt range, we'd give plenty of plenty of grunt to it. So at four milliamps, instead of, because of the resistance, resistor isn't quite the correct size, you'd leave this for a while to stabilize, mind you. Anyway, but it's 0.4, 015 is zero, is uh, four milliamps, which is our zero, value. I've just written that down and I'm going to set the, the calibrator here up to 20 milliamps. So my high value 20 milliamps is, so that's my 100% value is 1.02 volts which is 1.9930. So let's set this thing. Okay for, for a start I need to set now some scaling up. So I come up here, I come across, and I can set the scaling here, and I'm gonna switch the scaling on. 
Now, there's two ways. There's a two-point scaling, which is much simpler. And first scale point is the fact that I'm going to set that at uh, 1.9930. 1.9789930. Okay, and that is equal to 100%. Okay, so 1.9930 is 100% and this one here, just change that from negative to positive. It's, it was a bit of a trick there. And 0 0.4015, 4 oops, 0 0.015 is 0%. Yeah, 0%. And I'll change the units so it displays percent. Now you might have it in KPA or something or other anyway. So I'll just go backspace to get rid of the current unit. And I'll bring it up to here and go percentage. Thank you. And go down here. Okay. So therefore it's going to display instead of uh, 1.993 is 100%. 0 0.4015 uh, is 0%. So if I now go back to my channel here channel 3 and what I've got to do now is change the upper uh, oops okay upper and lower limit because it had the values that's it yeah okay it doesn't like the current ranges so I'm going to show it to 100% oops I'm going to set this to 100% Yes, 100%, and the lower value is not negative, it's positive. It's, uh, sorry, it's zero. Zero. Hmm. Six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So therefore, that's how on the graph it's going to show between 0 and 100 and if we turn around and set it to say it's 99.986 at, uh, at uh, 20 milliamps and I'll set it at um, 12 milliamps which should be 50 percent and there it is 50.015 so therefore we're all fine there I've set it to 4 milliamps that should be about 0 yep, which micro microvolts so therefore yeah that's sitting at zero so that's all working properly so that's how we configure now again if I turn around and set this thing running uh, start yep and I set this the the 4 to 20 milliamp to um, to scroll between various ranges etc now again you can change the speeds oh at the moment oh, actually one of the things I should point out here I'll just stop this yeah um, is the fact that you can set at the moment that the default is um, a 60 hertz filter. I'm going to put a 50 hertz filter on it because that will get rid of um, just uh, noise on the thing. Start it again, yeah. And here we go, yeah. storing, etc. And there you can see the 4 to 20 milliamp value is going up and down. And if I switch the digital pulse on, switch the digital pulse off, and if I grab my thermocouple, it will increase in value. There it is there. So there's those channels being recorded, real time, etc. Next video, we'll have a look at some of the triggering. Thank you very much.